I'm sorry, everyone. I totally, totally forgot how to actually go live. So just checking. Can someone let me know if you can actually hear me first and foremost? Um, and hello to all of you um, joining us. Let's just check you can hear me and I'm not just talking to myself because that would be unfortunate. Yay! Thank you, Barbara. Yay! Wonderful. Thank you so much to all of you who are joining me. Good. Sherry, you say you can hear me. Cindy, you can hear me. Fantastic. That's a relief. I had forgotten what that live panic was like when you can't get something to work and the clock is ticking. I just totally forgot where the button was that I was meant to push. <laughs> um, it's been a very long year. I'm sorry. I hope you can forgive me. Well, first of all, um, hi, James. Hi, um, Talia. Uh, tweet, tweet, all are and were, Marcy. Oh, it's so lovely to see so many familiar names. It's really fantastic to have you all on board. Um, Puma, you say yes. Um, the rarest sightings in the African bush. I know it is It is a rare sighting. It's been a, a busy year and I'm still not quite in the bush just yet. I'm in Joburg with my mom, I'm spending a bit of time with her. Shame, she's been looking after me so well on during the post-exam um, collapse that I may have slightly experienced. Well, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much to all of you for the incredibly kind words of support, whether they be on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or any of the various ways that you have reached out to me. I really appreciate it. I think I'm an incredibly lucky person to have so many people cheering me on behind the scenes. And I have to tell you that it it really does help because there have been some, some tough moments in the last year. It's not an easy degree. And I'm really very grateful to have had and to know that you're all there silently um, wishing me well has, has made a huge difference. It really, really does help with the motivation and the long nights. And I'm going to stop knocking my computer and take my hands away. Um, you know, those long nights and those long days and more long nights, this is it helps to know that everybody's there cheering me on. And of course, my mom's been fantastic in the support that she's given me. So thank you very much. Um, you are, of course, all welcome to send through your questions. What I'm going to do is I've got my phone next to me because there were some people who obviously wouldn't be able to join me. I knew that would be the case on a Tuesday. I know that people have got work and lives and things going on. It just happened. I, I honestly just missed this last weekend. I just didn't get there. Um, it were quite a few things I had to get done and yeah, we didn't get around to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read some of the questions for the people. Um, oh, hello, Michael. No problem. You're not late at all. I haven't said anything of any particular value. Um, Mrs. Zero cooked dinner early to be here. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, Sassy Cassie, I miss you too. I miss you all. It's really very, it's a, uh, yeah, it's it's very strange to be um, so disconnected in a way from everything that's been happening for, from something that was such a big part of my life for so long. Uh, I just haven't had much time to keep up with the goings on, but I, I do try. Um, Michael actually has sent me a vast amount of information on what's been happening with the Juba hyenas. So thank you, Michael, for filling me in. I really do appreciate it. It's been fascinating. Um, right. So Alaram, were you say that you want to know what my go-to trick is for staying alert for late-night studyings, um, or any all-nighters? I am now at the point in my life where I think I might be a little bit too old for the all-nighters. I've always been somebody who needs a fair, a, a comfortable amount of sleep, and I've sort of, I've got to the point now where I've realised that staying up all night for me isn't productive. So I haven't done any all-nighters. I did. During the last three weeks um, during the exam season, what I did was if I had a really bad situation, which I did, there were some exams I was cramming for just at the last minute. And it wasn't because I wasn't working consistently up until the exam. I just didn't. There weren't enough hours in the day. Um, <laughs> so what I did was I went to bed at 10 and then I woke up at 2. And then I studied from then on towards the, um, oh, for that exam that day. Uh, I think I did that for three of them that were just really last minute panic stricken. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And I'll explain why that came to be. Obviously, I'm still working um, as I, as well as studying. So that was also just a bit of a juggle. Um, <laughs> Marcy, you say you can't do all nighters. No, I don't think 
they they work for everyone. I know, obviously, the friends of mine, some of them stayed up all night before the exam. If I did that, I just, I, I wouldn't be able to think clearly in the exam. I need that sleep. Um, so um, let me just, well, hold on, everybody, slow down. <laughs> I can't read that fast. Um Marcy, you say, how is vet school um, going? You work nonstop, so missing social media posts. We haven't missed anything from me. I have been, <coughs> excuse me, I've been so busy that I actually haven't really put anything up on social media. And I deactivated um, my accounts six weeks before the exam. I then reactivated them, but that's a different topic of conversation, which we can chat about later. <coughs> Terribly sorry. It's not COVID, I promise. There's a lot of it going around, but <clears throat> I think it's just the return to city life. I think my sinuses are playing up. Um, um, vet school's going amazingly. It's very hard at times. Obviously, it was never going to be easy. And the wonderful thing is that I love it. I, I mean, I think one of my friends actually described it best. Her name is KJ. She's from Korea, and she is uh, in her mid-30s. And she said to me, it's micro unhappiness for macro happiness, which I think was a very good way of putting it. We were sitting together in the cafeteria on a Sunday morning or Saturday morning. I can't remember because my power was out again and I needed power. So I went to the campus and she said that that, uh, you know, it is it's it's really hard work. But I know I absolutely know for certain that this is what I've got to do. And it's it's going well hard but it's going really well and I think I've been very lucky with all of the support that I've had um now Kennedy and you say you've been enjoying my articles in Africa Geographic thank you I do work hard on them um it's a fantastic publication I feel to to be able I'm lucky enough to work for them they've been fantastic in terms of understanding that my hours need to be flexible. Um, I obviously do my best when I can. And there's sometimes where I have to fall behind a little bit and then I'll catch it up. So yeah, it's been, uh, sometimes I've found that switch. I think I've spoken about this before, the switch quite difficult because you're doing <clears throat> um, some complicated hormone stuff or something. And then you switch to a creative side and I've never, my creative side's never been all that strong. So that's something that I've had to work on being able to switch between the two. Not always, doesn't always work out. Sometimes I sit and stare at the blank page for hours and I try, but it, it's all working out. Um, Patty, you say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you too. I'm really jumping around here. Sorry if I missed your question. If I, if I miss something and you want me to go back to it, just repeat it. Um, Jason, you say this is so awesome. All the support here for you, it is. It's amazing. I'm such a lucky girl. Um, Lauren, thank you. It's lovely to hear from you too. Um, yeah, it's been, and Wendy, yes, a very profound way of thinking. Uh, I think she, she really summed it up very, very well. What I'm going to do, I'll tell you a little bit about my year and my subjects because you've got to hear about the sheep. I've got to tell you about the sheep. But first, I just I did promise that I would answer some questions for people who can't be here. So I've got my phone with me. I'm just going to quickly um, go through these and then we can get back to them. Now, oh, I don't want to give the abbreviation. Trina wanted to know how different vet school is to what I expected. You know, it's, I think it's been harder. And I. it wasn't that I didn't think it was going to be hard. I just... I guess I didn't expect the ways in which it was going to be difficult. Um, I I think that uh, perhaps there's a bit more focus on uh, production farm animals than I expected, which is my fault because obviously that is an enormous aspect of veterinary work. And it's very, very important that we have a very firm base in that. And of course, I have no experience with farm animals. So that's been an interesting aspect to it. And then you wanted to know when I graduate, do I want to work mostly with domestic or wild animals? Obviously, wildlife will always be the dream. I don't want to close any doors yet. I'm only in my second year. I don't know what the future holds. None of us do. The last two years have well and truly proved that. Uh, my life has turned upside down in so many different ways. And I think I've had to learn to go with that flow. 
So I don't want to close any doors. I think it's unlikely I'm going to go into something like poultry, for example, or, or pigs, or indeed production animals, but I really like sheep. But um, I think a combination of smallies, so the normal small animal practice, your dogs, your cats, your pets, and wildlife would be the ideal goal. But I don't want to close any doors. I think emergency medicine for me personally, I think I'd be quite good with that. Well, I hope I'd be quite good with that. I don't know yet. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm, I, I just want to keep every door open for now. I don't want to shut off any opportunities. Alinda, you want to know, if, do I feel that since studying, I can detach myself emotionally from traumatic cases we see? <coughs> you know, we haven't really seen that many traumatic cases. In fact, we haven't seen any because we're only in second year and we know nothing. <laughs> if, I, if there's one thing I've learned this year, it's how little we know. We're really just building that foundation. I think the OP, the honest word we call it OP, um, course is an incredibly good one. It's, as far as I understand, quite well respected, but they're very focused on building the foundation. But honestly, I think my background in the bush might actually help me detach more than anything else, because we've, as you know, you've watched with us, um, we, we've seen some truly tragic, horrifying things. We've seen some really uh, horrific injuries. Um, we've had to sit and watch certain things take place. So I think that that maybe will help me detach more than anything else. Um, and I think that might be something that will be a strong point of mine. And it's not to say I don't have, I hope that's the case, because obviously it is emotionally very taxing, um, a taxing career. So I hope that that will work to my advantage. Let's put it that way. Um, and then, um, wait, let me just not give, uh, no, JG, you want to know what's been the biggest surprise for me so far besides COVID-19? My sheep exam was the biggest surprise for me. I promise you I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, <laughs> it was the biggest surprise. I'm, I'm not sure who's more surprised, me or sheep. Um, and then uh, Judy Tonkinson, you wanted to know if my studying is beginning to make sense now and things starting to fall into place. Yes and no. I think, as I said, um, I think we realized how much we don't know which is a big thing and I think quite an important thing. But the way that they design the course is extremely well thought out. You do one thing in anatomy. So you get to see the, the gross anatomy of where everything fits together. Then you do it in physiology. So you understand the mechanisms behind, let's say, the gastrointestinal tract, um, what hormones are controlling it. You've seen it. You've seen a horse's, di uh, horse's digestive tracts. Don't even get me started on those. Um, you've seen those different ones, the rumen, and then you go into the physiology of what's actually happening, the metabolism of what's actually happening. And then you look at the histology, which when you first start is just pink. It's just slides of cells and they're all pink and you meant to know where they come from. And then slowly they start to resolve themselves into actual structures and you start to see the patterns and think, okay, I can see that, therefore it's that. And then you get it wrong. But, you know, the idea is there. <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, I think it is starting to make sense. I think it will tie together a lot more in our later years. I'm really looking forward to from our second half of our fifth year, we start clinics and we, we start the actual practical work. And we finished with exams, except for the final big one at the end. And we're just doing clinics for a year and a half. And I'm really looking forward to that. So that's going to be very special. Right. The sheep. So <laughs> one of the subjects that we do is ethology and we do both the theory of it. So the behavior of the animals, their gestation, their breeding behavior, their social behavior is obviously really important within, say, a small animal practice. You've got to explain to a person why their cat is scratching their couch or urine spraying on their couch or why their dog is barking for some reason or why their dogs are fighting, whatever the case may be. So we do ethology, we do the behavior of everything, dogs, cats, horses, pigs, cows, sheep and goats. And within that course, we also do the practical handling of all of those animals. And for different animals, that entails different things. In the case of the sheep, and um, Pretoria has UP, um, OP has got what we call the OTAO animals, the um, honest poor teaching animal unit. We have a flock of merino sheep, we have cows, we have the beagles. And we have horses. 
and goats actually, though we didn't spend much time with the goats. And the sheep, the sheep exam involved catching a sheep, herding the sheep and as a group, well, you know, that's what they do, and then grabbing one and setting it up. And setting it up involves <laughs> plonking it on its bottom. That's basically what it means. Now, I'm obviously not an enormous person, and some of those sheep are easily 50, 60 kilograms, and they are, they see the second years coming. They just know, they know you are inexperienced. So the idea is that you get them, you take them by the hock, and you get them out of the flock, but you can't obviously drag them by the hock, and then you get them, and you put your hand around the muzzle, and you can't pull the wool, that you instantly fail, because that's obviously a welfare problem. You can't grab them by the throat. You've got to get your hand around the muzzle and your hand under the flank opposite you, put them between your legs and flip. And you've got to turn your the head onto their flank and pull up so that and step with them so that they have to go down onto their bottom. But some of these ewes have been around and they've seen several generations of second years and they just go mm, like this and then they fight you and then they spin with you. <laughs> And they weigh 60 kilograms and you're exhausted. And I mean, my feet, the bruises on my feet, because they stand on your feet with those sharp little hooves and they do a little pirouette. And then you get finally get them down or they just flop. And they just collapse down face first onto the ground. You've got to heave them up. Um, and that you can't do either because you lose marks for that. You've got to get them back up and start again. Anyway, and then you get them onto their bottoms. You've got to shift them so they don't sit on their tails. And they go, throw their heads back into your chest because you're meant to check their eyes and their teeth and their nostrils and so on because that's part of the exam. And you've got to age them from their teeth. And they throw their heads back. They do anything they can. Or they jump out of your arms. Anyway, so by the time I got to my sheep exam, I'm not terrified because I've done the practices and um, I, I have managed but not without a proper song and dance. And I swear I've never been that sore afterwards in my life. Anyway, I don't know what happened because my friends came out with horror stories. The one just couldn't get the sheep to sit. It was fighting her. She got a six tooth ewe who just wasn't having it. Uh, I, I watched the people before me. It had been raining nonstop. Rugby tackling their sheep because you can't let it go. If you let it go, then you lose marks once you've got it. Uh, it's not allowed to escape. If it escapes, you have to catch the same one because it's not allowed to learn to escape. <laughs> um, no, don't worry, by the way. The sheep are absolutely fine. I promise you they cause us more pain than we cause them. We cause them no pain. Just um, They just give us grief. Anyway, my exam arrives. I'm now shaking. <laughs> it had been such a long day. Anatomy had been delayed because we were all exposed to COVID the week before, so they had to shift everything around. Um, which is also why we had one horrible week. And I don't know, it just happened. The sheep just went down. It was the most, I just, I think I just didn't give it time to think about what I was doing. It was amazing. It just went down. I, I think the examiner could see how shocked I was because I was staring at this thing, sort of leaning against my knees and holding it up going, oh, oh okay. Anyway, so that is the story of the sheep. I love sheep. Oh, shame. It just looked at me. Um, anyway, so check the hooves, check the chest, <clears throat> tummy, nostrils, teeth, eyes, ears, <clears throat> do the Fumacha anemia score for worms, all of that. And then um, the, the other thing we had to do was halters on the horse, a whole load of rope work with cows lifting up their feet in the crush, um, hobbling them. Uh, putting a rope halt around their necks, all of those sorts of things. So I obviously got pooped on, happens. Um, halter on the horse, lift the feet up, check under the tail. Uh, and then the beagles, oh, we love the beagles. They're such good natured dogs, considering they are literally there for vet students to learn with. Uh, they do get spoiled and they're very loved. Um, so just putting them in lateral recumbency, so on their side, all of those sorts of things, training them. <clears throat> And such a fantastic course. Um, and then somebody actually asked me if I dissected anything. Um, yes, many, many things. That was the hands down the most stressful part of the course. I love anatomy. As you know, I have an innate fascination for how things work. But it was 
it was a very stressful time. We had six weeks where we did, first week was embryology and chickens, embryology and avian anatomy. Um, second week was thoracic limb. Third week was the theory, because it was COVID again, theory of the thorax and the abdomen. Fourth week was dissecting the thorax and the abdomen. Fifth week was dissecting the pelvic limb and the genital organs, pelvic cavity. And then the sixth week was the head and all the cranial nerves, um, sinuses, everything like that. So it was the brain. Had to learn all parts of the brain. Um, so that was very stressful. We dissected. We're not allowed to take photos. Well, we are allowed to take photos. We're not allowed to share them publicly because it is some of those animals are people's pets that have been donated very kindly for us to learn with. So it's obviously just not appropriate for us to share. But yeah, I dissected several dogs, um, a horse and a goat. And then everybody gets a different, uh, or a lot of people get different species. And then you rotate, once you've dissected your, say, whatever, um, dog uh, or whatever, then you rotate around and you get them to teach you what they've learned on theirs. Because they obviously have different muscles, all kinds of different things. They can't all just be the same, <laughs> much to our um, disappointment. So that was, yeah, that was very tough. I really loved it, but it was a vast amount of information to learn in six weeks. Um, so that was, yeah, I, we did, so we did muscle specimens first and then latex specimens for the blood vessels and the nerves. That's basically how it worked. Right. Um, Tim, thank you very much for your complimentary words. Didi, um, you can send me a private message about uh, accessing the articles. I will have a look at that. Uh, Michael, yes, a sheep is somewhat different to a anatomically to a hyena. <laughs> Fortunately, they don't bite. They they just stand on your foot and do a little twist so that your feet are blue and your bones are bruised. Um, Kathy, you say vet accredited wild animal sanctuary would be a good fit. I think so. I, I think I would like to, I'd really like to contribute to conservation more. Um, and in doing so, working with things like snares and dehorning and so on. Um, <clears throat> human wildlife conflict. But I think, as I said, we just wait and see what the future holds. I've just learned not to make any plans. Um, Laura Moore, you say, when one loves animals, one must have both a tender heart and a thick skin too. Absolutely. And I think that applies to people who run sanctuaries, um, all sorts of places, welfare places. Um, I think that you loving animals is a very brave thing to do, um, especially if you're going to dedicate your lives to trying to help them. I think vets actually are a small part of the overall industry. So, yes, I agree. I think, you know, the people who go in and, and help stray dogs and deal with horrific things like that, um, they're the real heroes, actually. Um, here we go. Terry, you say, it's lovely to see me empowered and content. Thank you. It's been a really long two years, but it, it's been so worth it. Uh, couldn't have done it without some amazing support, though. Um and then, Racina, you say that you watch a sheep farmer from Canada. Oh, don't jump. Sorry, not you. Um, the thingy jumped. Um, you say you watch her and her dailings going on, goings on. I know, that's hilarious. Oh, the lambing. I missed, I didn't see any of the births of the lambs, but they were wandering around and they are just so cute. <laughs> Good practice for managing human toddlers tantruming. Absolutely. Um. Chris, you want to know how many years is vet school? It's six years, and it is um, it's it's six years. The last year and a half, as I said, is practical, and then you have an extra year of compulsory community service in South Africa. So you get placed somewhere in the country, and you do whatever the state needs you to do. Um, whether it's uh, local community farms, uh, communal cattle systems, whatever that may be. So, yes, you spend the, the year doing that. Um, it is paid, though. So, and then after that, you can start your, your job. <laughs> Lots of great um, sheep jokes here <laughs> and what they were saying to each other. Um, Alp, you want to know if I'm from the UK? I'm not. Uh, I've never... 
I've actually started to notice my accent change in Pretoria North, uh, and I'm trying to rein that in slightly. Um, not from England. I lived there for three years, uh, just English South African. It's a very similar accent to James's. We both have a similar sort of, um, uh, we both have a similar upbringing. <clears throat> James, you say the sheep stuff sounded intimidating. I was terrified, absolutely terrified. I just thought I was going to fail that exam. I didn't. I don't know how. <laughs> um, right. Um, Marcy, enjoy your meeting. You're probably gone already. Sorry, I'm a little bit behind, but thank you. Um, Jason, you say this field is wide open for me. Thank you. Um, just let's get through. I just keep telling myself one year at a time, this bit at a time, this bit at a time, this bit at a time. Um, <clears throat> Carrie, you say you volunteered an exotic cat sanctuary and would love for me to come out. I'd love that too. I would, I'd love to. Um, we would, I think we'd all like to be able to travel, obviously, at the moment. Um, I think my traveling days will be numbered for a little while, but one day I would really love to take you up on that. Um, <laughs> Kathy, you can barely flip your little domestic kitty for a nail trim. I think they we didn't do much cat handling. We did the emergency, the cat's about to get away, towel throw, and that's about it. And I think that's one of the things we're going to all struggle with the most in a veterinary practice is dealing with cats. I mean, they move in every dimension and they have sharp bits everywhere and they can turn themselves upside down and inside out to get to you. So I think we're going to have fun with cats personally. Um then, Michael, you want to know if there are any veterinary programs in South Africa to increase vaccination of domestic dogs in rural areas? Yeah, there are. There are many different programs. Uh, it depends on where you happen to be who's running it. I know that EWT, for example, does run programs. Um, and that makes total sense because, of course, rabies and distemper are the two biggest killers of wild dogs in South Africa, or at least um, two very uh, significant causes of wild dog mortality. So yes, there are <coughs> there are programs to do so. I think part of your community service work could well involve that. And of course, a lot of vets opt to do so in their uh, to run these programs of their own initiative because most of us. I think that many of you will be aware that the world is is changing in how we see animals and people and. The connection between us and there's a very big emphasis particularly at op on one health so improving both human and animal lives in different ways and that involves improving the education within the local villages to help to provide for these animals um, one of the things we learn of course is nutrition in our second year so we did nutrition and and one of the things we spoke about at length was this is the ideal diet for a dog, but it isn't necessarily what that person can do can afford. It's not necessarily what they can manage. So how can you improve it incrementally? How can you make that dog's life a little bit better? So it's all very much um, realistic base. Peter, you say you hope I'm managing financially. We're here for you if things are needed. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And as always, I thank everybody for their generosity. I will keep the PayPal scholarship fund running. I would never ask again, but it will stay open. Um, I'm very deeply thankful for the contributions. It's scary. It's scary. Uh, it's very scary in today's economy to know that at the end of it, at 36, 7, I'm going to be back where I started from. And that's all if, if I'm lucky. Um, if something goes wrong, if my car breaks or, or anything like that, or I get sick and I can't finish a year, it it becomes a whole different ball game. But we're okay. We're, I'm managing. Um, I, I still work. Obviously, I make sure that I work as hard as possible to to be sensible. To I mean, I don't have a life. Don't get me wrong, but that's okay. I don't need one right now. This is my life. This is where my my focus is. Um, Sassy Cassie, so how long is the internship? Uh, as I said, it's a year's community service. Mm. Donna, you say, what's the least appealing part of my vet studies? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. 
the least appealing part. You know, I did have one moment in midwinter where I went into the campus on a Sunday because they open up the anatomy hall during anatomy week so we can study for the test on the Monday after the week of dissections. <laughs> Wearing three layers because I'm always cold and it was really cold in Pretoria this year. So three layers. So my lab coat is sort of stretched. The buttons are stretched at the side and I'm digging through the formalin baths of animal parts with a giant metal hook. And I thought to myself, well, this is this is definitely the most attractive I've ever been. Um, but it didn't matter because I got the leg that I was looking for and managed to yank it out. It was a horse leg as well. It was very heavy. Um, least appealing. Look, there have been some tough moments. The last, the exams, I didn't feel like I necessarily, I was okay, but I just felt like I rushed into them. I just never had time to actually study. And I don't like not feeling prepared for something. I think that's something I have to accept in vet is that you just won't be. You just won't be. You just have to do the best that you can. A lot of stuff happened that was outside of my control. The municipality had some major problems. I was without power often, and there was no phone signal um, where I where my apartment is. So that made life extremely difficult. There was no power, no phone signal, so I couldn't even hotspot. And, of course, everything's been online, and it's very expensive and really not eco-friendly to print everything and you can't print histology slides or pictures. So that was quite tough. At one point, my room flooded just before an exam. I now can't remember which exam it was. I think it was before anatomy. Or no, maybe it was before that awful week where we did everything plus anat the second part of anatomy. My room flooded in the storm. <laughs> it was quite funny in hindsight. Um, obviously, my friend, um, my friend got really very sick. And that's been very heavy. He's a very special human being. Um, his son is my godson. And that happened just before the start of exams. And I just felt like I couldn't be there for people who are basically my second family. Um, and that's been really tough. I'm not, I will go there as soon as I can. I'm just isolating for a little bit because yeah, I've been, everybody had COVID and I think a lot of people weren't necessarily saying anything because it was exams. And so I'm just making sure that I'm clear. Um, but yeah, that was a bit rough. So those were some of the, the less appealing sides of things. Um, that's obviously still very difficult for them and my heart is broken for them, but they are, they're amazing. They've, they've been absolutely incredible. Um, Donna, you say you recommend reading the books by vet James Harriet. So I grew up reading James Harriet. I know those stories front to back and back to front. In my first year of law many years ago, uh, we were allowed to get hoodies with our names printed on them and we could make whatever name we wanted. So my friend Michael was Atticus Finch and my friend Alex was Billy Flynn and mine said James Harriet. So, yes, I, I might have realized quite early on that this was where I wanted to get to. But, um, no, I love the James Harriet tales. I relate to many of the things a lot more. Obviously, veterinary science has progressed a great deal since his time. And he obviously straddled the transition with the advent of antibiotics. And But, yeah, I have, I have really stories. I've had a good several moments. I have thought about James Harriet, a wealthy white, I think his name actually is, um, he's crossed my mind a lot recently. Oh, Laura Moore, you, uh, you say I should write a book of your, my adventures. I should write a book and uh, a book of the characters that you meet. I mean, OP is such an eclectic place. It's marvelous, the most beautiful campus, wonderful people, amazing lecturers. They've done so much to keep our education on track with all of this drama. Um, but my goodness, do you get some characters there? Some very, very entertaining ones. I'm not going to say anything because they teach me for another five, six, or well, another four years. I think that'd be a bit silly to do so. But we have some really special people, really very entertaining human beings, very kind, some very motherly, um, really amazing, amazing, incredibly intelligent human beings. Sometimes scary, but, you know, it's an important thing we're learning. <laughs> um, Patty, you want to say, have I had the two shots for COVID already? Will they have a booster available? 
I got the Johnsons, so I've only had one shot. Um, I went almost immediately because, first of all, I don't really know my way around Pretoria and my friend was going, which kind of helped. Um, but also I, um, I wanted to go quickly because there were quite a few cases in the university. So I went almost immediately. I went to a government facility and they just gave me the Johnsons and... I we should be being cleared for boosters sometime in the next few months. Uh, I mean, in the next few weeks, hopefully. Um, oh, thank you, our Lauren. That's very kind of you. Um, what else can I tell you about? Uh, I loved physiology. I really, really enjoyed physiology. Uh, it was my favorite subject, hands down. So I was quite sad where I had to, I ended up having to cram the entire year's syllabus into less than 24 hours that did not work didn't work <laughs> but I really really enjoyed understanding the way that everything works mm, what else can I tell you about mm, I actually think that's largely it next year we will be and I don't want to keep you all it's Christmas time and you all have lives um next year will be I can't remember what next year is I know we do pathology. Um, I know toxicology is one of the big things that catches people out, uh, pharmacology. And I think we start general surgery next year, but we won't be touching any kind of surgical anything um, for at least another two years. We have a fantastic skills lab at OP where we practice the various things that we need to do on fake animals uh, long before we get anywhere close to touching a... Um, <laughs> touching a real animal. Carrie, you say you are working and so don't want to do that. I must, I mean, I still am working. I'm going to take leave from Africa Geographic in February. Um, but I must say it's been, it, after exams, I just wanted to, it's that time of year. Everybody just wants to curl up in bed and it's been freezing in South Africa, unseasonably cold for mid for midsummer. Peter, has there been anything I felt was pointless? I think I would have to be very silly to think anything is pointless. There were some things I thought to myself at the time, I wonder why we're learning this in this detail as opposed to this in that detail. But um, I, I would never, ever think, I think that that syllabus is so carefully planned and designed and tweaked to the point that no, I, I never felt anything was was pointless. Um, I can totally, even if I don't end up going into production, for example, I totally see the value of learning, uh, for example, how farm systems work, everything from chickens to uh, you know how chickens work. When when's the light? When are the lights put on for layers, for example? That's all really important stuff for a vet to know, and we can't. We, you know, whether you are vegan or a vegetarian or whatever the case may be, or you, you aren't any of those things and you eat meat, we can all agree that we want the healthiest possible animals raised under the best welfare circumstances um, and producing as much, each individual producing as much as they can so that we need less animals to do the same amount as our population grows. And that's where I think vets have an enormous role to play. Um, Thanks, Patty. I will. Uh, I, I will get the booster as soon as I can. Um, <laughs> Kennedy, Anne, you say you've had the morning off, so not to rush. And you made sure you did. Oh, that was so kind of you. Um, <coughs> Puma, you want to know how long a break I have till school starts over? February, mid-February. We start once again. So that would be, um, yeah, that would be, I think it's the 21st. We start again. Mm. <laughs> Tiana, you say in human massage school, one classmate said she just wanted to massage people. Why did she have to learn about how the eyeball works? I know. I mean, you know, that we were doing the nerves for the for the head block, the head anatomy block, and there's three nerves that innovate the different um, muscles of the eye, and you've got to remember which of those that is, and that's just one little section of. So it does feel a little bit crazy. Marilyn, you say no, that I always have a silent audience cheering me on. Thank you. That's really very kind. Um, I appreciate that. Atom, 
Uh, Atom Gaming, will I be practicing on reptiles at vet school too? Yes, it will come up. We do do exotics. Oh, exotics is, is what we term them. Um, it is part of our clinical rotations as we go through the years. There is a dedicated exotics clinic at OP, mostly, I think, dealing with birds. Um, I know one of them, um, I might be speaking out of turn here, I don't know enough, but um, we had a lecturer who came in who worked there who was telling us about the ground hornballs and so on that come through. But yes. Um, and then Donna, happy holidays to you, to you too. It's wonderful to see you. Peter, you want to know how my mom's doing? She's she's doing okay. I mean, the restrictions have obviously hit everybody in a major way, but she is as stoic as they come. She is fantastic. She just, she makes the best of every situation. I love spending time with her. So I've been really, really glad to be able to be with her for a little bit. Um, and then obviously once I go to Hoodsprate, I will then come back here, but I am going to go to Hoodsprate uh, in the next week or so. <laughs> Jason, so I will be on drive at Wild Earth in January. I don't think so. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't know. I would be totally willing to do that, but I'm not sure under what terms that would. I know that one of their big concerns is that people get confused and upset and then it's only one drive and then it's it just ends up being a bit of a complicated situation. Um, Carol, I'll have to update myself with the Juma clan because Corky and Ribbon are at war with each other. Yes, I see that. Um, it's interesting. I mean, I don't... I. You know, we missed such a big part of what happened years ago when they moved off Juma and they went to Manuleti. And that was when um, there was some kind of dramatic shift in power and Gwen went to the top. And I think she took Ribbon with her. And then I think Ribbon got knocked down again. And then Ribbon rose up again. And now she's been knocked down again. It's all very confusing. I remain, I don't want to sort of speak out of turn, but I remain convinced that the Juma clan is too small and as a result there's never been a stable hierarchy because nobody's had the network to maintain one and there's always been the potential for overthrow because everything is just so evenly matched and I think without that I think it really is very clear how much of a role that um, lack of stable hierarchy has played in the growth of the clan because the clan hasn't really grown. We've lost a lot of young members over time. Um, and, and you think about the Elephant Plains clan next door. It, it's all very, it's very intriguing. I don't understand entirely myself, but yeah. Um, Robert, you say rabbits are considered to be exotic animals. My vet is an exotic vet who also treats cats and dogs. Yeah, we actually, <laughs> look, I don't know much about rabbits. My, my, one of my, um, um, and the people who lives on the same compound as I do. Compound? That's not the word I'm looking for. No, it is. Um, she's in her fifth year. She's got a pet rabbit called Nugget. Very good. But we also have feral rabbits that wander around where I live in Pretoria. I love where I live. There's monkeys. There's woodland kingfishers. There's wonderful birds. There's cuckoos all the time. There is one rooster who is not my best friend and who likes to crow from 10 until the next morning, all night. It's very, very distressing. Um, but he's he's won me over, I suppose, by sheer determination. Um, gosh, okay, I think I've run out of things to tell you. Uh, I'm sure there's more. So if you do have any questions, please pop them on. And then I will... Um, alarm where you say uh, winter silks thermal underlayers look them up thin yet warm I will I will look them up I I had really struggled with the cold uh, loving the heat I was till it went away um, imp you say is there size and numbers why the north clan in the Mara has been successful mm, I mean I I think I don't think I'm, I have enough knowledge to really comment on that. Would we consider them com successful? Yes, I guess. Uh, there's over 70 members. That That is pretty successful. And perhaps you'll find a similar situation in a, in the Mara that we just don't know about because obviously only certain clans are studied where you've got a little split 
And that plan, because it does happen, plans do split um, on occasion. Resources, they just get too big. And you get a split off and then perhaps it is the same. Perhaps it takes a long time for them to stabilize. I I don't really know. Um, I just hope that Ribbon manages to keep herself safe and doesn't get, I think, I think Ribbon needs to stay put now. I, th I really think she needs, I mean, Corky wandered around with that broken elbow I assume broken elbow, and she made a comeback. They are just such tough animals. It's phenomenal. Um, Deborah, thank you so much. I will do. I will post it again. I'm very uncomfortable asking for for donations. Um, it it is an anathema to me. I don't necessarily feel more deserving. I, I definitely know that there are people who are more deserving than I when it comes to that. So I. But I also really appreciate that many of you want to help. And that's what convinced me ultimately to do it. So I really do appreciate and, you know, I totally understand that not everyone's in the position to do so. Um, I will post it again. I just, I struggle with that sort of thing. It, it feels very strange to me. But I do really, really appreciate the, the stuff that you guys have given. Uh, I really do. Even if it's just support. Thank you, Sandy. That's very kind. Um, Ribbon has two adorable um, babies. I know I've seen the screenshots and, of course, I've seen James's pictures. They're gorgeous. Joanne, yes, I, I will pass on. I will definitely pass on the kindness at a later stage um, when I can and the love and whatever I can at a later stage. And, yes, I'm doing it to help all the animals we care for. Absolutely. Mm. Right, everybody. Thank you, Puma. Uh, I think that that's probably a good as as good a time as any to call it a night or a day for many of you, or hopefully not, you know, in the early hours of the morning or something. Peter, thank you. It's so wonderful to hear from all of you as well. It's been really very special. Um, oh, hang on a second. James, you say, speaking of the Sabi Sands, thank you for the way that J um, James and I handled the Hukumuri incident. Thank you. Um, yes, it's a, it was a really very tough thing to, to try and convey. I think in the world that we live in, people have lost a lot of compassion for the people that actually carry the responsibility and the impact of wild animals. Um, we know that human wildlife conflict is the biggest threat, the hands down biggest threat to, to wildlife in Africa. And the only way that we ever change that is by, um, is by treating the people who live with wildlife as people. I shouldn't have to say this, uh, but it doesn't make it any less tragic. So thank you. I appreciate that. It was obviously a very difficult thing that we did. Um, but yeah, Herbie actually was an enormous factor in that. He took me to meet the various people in the village. Um, and it's, yeah, it was it was a very interesting day. I kept getting offered Marula beer, which I really, no thank you. But <laughs> it was being offered constantly in sticky, in sticky um, reused <laughs> Coke bottles. In the middle of a COVID pandemic. Anyway, it's terribly sweet. Um, right. Uh, let me just see. I'm not missing anything. Alaramur. No, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I will always try and keep you guys updated. If I am forgetting to do so, please feel free to give me a prod or a poke or something. I, I do do my best. Obviously, there will be times where I'm just very busy. But I will always. I owe you all so much. It is the least I can do to keep you updated. Um, Tess, thank you so much. Okay, if I missed your name, I'm really sorry. It's just that there's a few and I can't read that fast. Um, Jasmine, you are so welcome, Joanne. You're welcome. Sassy Cassie, when will I do another update? I think only when I have something to say, really. Um, maybe perhaps when I'm a couple of weeks into my third year. Uh, I don't think I need to take up any of your time with random natterings. Uh, if I happen to see something amazing in, in Hood Sprite or something like that, then I might go live on social media spontaneously. But other than that, I think we'll wait until I have something further to tell you. Um, maybe some more sheep stories or something. Um, maybe I'll do a spontaneous live when something hilarious happens. 
Diana, yes. Hooray for Herbie. We miss him. I miss him. I do too. Um, thank you all. Thank you so much. Shreyas, am I saying your name right? If I'm not, I'm very sorry. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining. Julie, thank you. Wendy, Sherry, um, Terry, Patty, Puma, um, Judy, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, thank you for all the wishes of strength and inspiration. Thank you. I um, It's there. It's there. It's uh, It was the right decision. Thank goodness. It has absolutely been exactly what I was meant to do. Um, Wolfie, thank you very much. Stacy, thank you. I will get some rest. Um, I've been well looked after. Um, <laughs> Joanne, not taking up anyone's time to share news. Yeah, but let me make sure I have news and um, not just rambling, ramblings. Um, Kathy, thank you. That's a, that's a compliment. I'm still not 100% back up to my normal self, so I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not sure my rambling's any better. Um, Sterling, wonderful to see you, Cat Mom. Um, thank you so much, Mrs. Zero. Thank you, and thank you for all of your help, Mrs. Zero. You went out and found those videos and edited them for me, and they went into my application, and I'm there. So I'm really grateful for that. Thank you, Didi. Um, thank you so much, and everybody, happy holidays. Um, for when for wherever you happen to be in the world. Um, I will take care of my mom. Thank you very much, Ellie Girl. Um, yeah, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Jamie's random natterings. Don't get me started. I'll random natter all night, and then we'll, none of us will get what we need to get done. Thank you so much, James. Uh, really appreciate it, Jason, Joe. Have a wonderful Christmas. Merry Christmas for those of you celebrating. Happy holidays for the rest of you. Um, happy New Year. My goodness. We are now... Two years post Wild Earth. Can you believe it? Time flies. And what an interesting two years they've been. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm going to now have to try and, oh, there's a big red button that says end stream. Thank goodness. If only there'd been a big red button that had said go live. All right. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And, yeah, I'll catch you all in a few months' time when I have more to tell you. Bye.